and nuclear systems. Or as a subtitle, can we achieve capital costs of two to four dollars per kilowatt hour of heat storage? My co-author is Ali Azhefri. We are both from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. I start with the first question, an observation. Low carbon systems require massive storage. The U.S. energy system has 45 to 90 days of storage uh, to deliver energy when needed. This deals with daily to seasonal variations, plus unexpected events such as hurricanes and cold waves. Now today, most of that storage is in the form of fossil fuels that will not be available in a low carbon world. In that context, it is important to note that the U.S. annual energy consumption is 25,000 terawatt hours. One month of storage is 2 million gigawatt hours. Given that energy demand, we require energy storage strategies at the million gigawatt hour scale. Now, we are examining a 100 gigawatt scale heat storage system, but in context of the storage needs for the nation, we would need about 10,000 of these units to equal 1 million gigawatt hours. The next slide shows the system design with heat storage, and we've divided it into four components, the electric sector, electricity conversions, heat storage and generation, and heat markets with assured generating capacity. Let us start in the middle, heat storage and generation. We have the nuclear reactor or CSP system that produces heat. In our system, all of that heat is sent to a crushed rock heat storage system. The heat from the system can go in several directions. First, it can go vertically, where we convert heat to electricity for the electricity market and where the conversion capability, that is the turbine generator capacity, is two or three times the base load production capacity of heat by the nuclear reactor or CSP system. In the upper, upper right hand corner, we show what we do if we have very low priced electricity on the market. We buy that low priced electricity and we convert it to heat that goes into the crushed rock heat storage system. Now, the, from crushed rock heat storage, we can also send heat to the industrial market. And if we are short of energy, we can use a combustion heater to add heat to the crushed rock heat storage system. The next slide shows the 100 gigawatt crushed rock trench storage system. We're talking about a single trench storage container filled with crushed rock with a width of approximately 60 meters a height of 20 meters and up to a thousand meters long. A gigawatt hour of heat storage or more per 10 meters of trench. Two important design features. The trench is filled with crushed rock, the lowest cost heat storage material. So we start with the cheapest material in our heat storage system. Second, we have minimized the surface to volume ratio and thus the amount of steel and insulation uh, to insulate the crushed rock from the environment. So key points, low cost crushed rock, minimize surface to volume ratio of the container that it is in. The next picture shows Neyland Stadium, a football stadium in the United States versus crushed rock storage. I show this to get some scale what we're talking about. An American football field is about 44 meters wide and 91 meters long. Our heat storage system is shown in the white. And as you can see, uh, we're talking about a very wide system, a very high system, but also a kilometer long. This is a very large heat storage system. Now, important to get important to take a look at the heat transfer. We transfer heat to and from heat storage with a heat transfer oil or liquid nitrate salt. And if we have hot salt and we wish to heat up the oil, what we do is we spray hot salt or cold salt, hot oil or cold oil fluid over the rock with gravity flow 
of the salt or oil from the top of the rock down to a bottom collection pan and where the, where the fluid is collected and returned to be reheated. So we have a rock pile with sprayers on top. This method of heat transfer minimizes the heat transfer fluid inventory and cost. The fluid moves heat. It is not used for heat storage. Now we choose the heat transfer oil or nitrate salt depending upon the reactor or CSP coolant temperatures. Both of these coolants, of course, are used in CSP heat systems today and are stored in tanks. We use heat transfer oils for temperatures less than 400 C. Uh, in most cases, the oils are relatively inert to most types of rock. We use nitrate salts for temperatures less than 600 C. In this case, we must be careful to provide compatible rock types. Uh, it's, it's a more corrosive environment and a higher temperature, and thus the rock selections are somewhat more limited. Now, we use sequential heating or cooling of crushed rock section by section with hot fluid flowing by gravity. What we show is our trench system, a side view on top, and a top view of the trench on the lower side of this view graph. And as you can see, we have a very long trench. We have cold rock zone, hot rock zone. And what we do is we have waves of cold, cold rock and hot rock going from left to right. Now, if we look at the side view, the top per figure in this lot, this view graph, we see that we have hot salt coming in. The hot salt goes through the crushed rock, comes out the bottom. If the hot salt has not been fully cooled, that hot salt is next taken and sent to the next section of crushed rock, poured on the crushed rock, flows through the crushed rock, partially heating that rock, and continuing on until we have cold salt that goes back to the reactor or CSC, CSP system to be collected. And so what we have is a wave of hot to cold <laughs> as we heat the salt, heat the rock from left to right. Uh, we have the same type of operation, of course, if we're recovering heat from the crushed rock. Well, what are the conclusions? Conclusions is that heat storage is all about cost. And our goal here, of course, is to minimize that cost by going to very low cost components. And we show here the progression to lower cost oil and salt systems. Today we have nitrate, salt, or oil in tanks. That's commercial technology. Different groups are working on adding crushed rock to the oil or nitrate salt to reduce the cost of oil and nitrate salt. Uh, the Europeans are looking at uh, crushed rock and nitrate salt. Uh, the Koreans are looking at uh, hot oil in, in crushed rock. But it's a tank of liquid with rock in it. We are looking at one further progression where we have crushed rock with oil or salt heat transfer. The goal to minimize each component and thus the total system cost. With that, I will stop and open the discussion to the audience. Thank you.